person that was it had to find them. Mm -hmm. And uh, same with kick. Ole Ole Olson Freedom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, you holler that when you gave up, and then they they could all come in free. They could come in and they'd have to run in and touch the uh, yeah, telephone or whatever it was, or <laughs> uh, to get in free. With the we used to play kick the can out here on the corner at night. Yeah. yeah. And I remember in one time in particular, it sticks in my mind that Dad was taking care of us. And sitting at the table. <laughs> sitting at the dining room table doing his big you know, drawings and layouts. And we were all out there way late. Ask Probably was Kirk. 9 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Mother came home and found he was supposed to be taking care of us, supposed to have put us all to bed. You know, we were still out there playing kick the can. <laughs> but, of course, there weren't any cars to speak of in those days. You know, just a, a car would go by at 15 miles an hour <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, the winters, <clears throat> and I, I, you know, when we were young, the uh, horses, they, they used to take horse and plow, and plow down the street all the way here uh, for, to make a sidewalk, a wooden, a sidewalk more or less, yes. kind of like a, a yeah, sidewalk, the sidewalk uh, but it was a uh, horse uh -huh. drawn, wooden plow, wooden plow. Uh -huh. yeah, that's true. And the sides would be so flat, uh -huh. and go along straight. and kick the sides. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can remember seeing those horses in the feet. They were these great big, great big, big heavy horses, work horses, yeah. you know. Right. Mm -hmm. And speaking of horses, uh, the uh, several of the delivery people had horse-drawn wagons. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. The uh, Iceman Ice had Man. one when he first started. Mr. Bankston. Yeah. And you'd put and a card up in your window. You put a card up in the window saying how many pounds of ice you wanted. You could either get 25 or 50 or 75. Our icebox wouldn't take 75 pounds, we usually got 50. And he would see the, the sign and uh, come in with his 50 pounds of ice mm -hmm. and put and it in the refrigerator, or in the right. ice box. Ice box. Yeah. <laughs> and then you had to have a pan under there and it would well, melt. Well, we had a and some uh, drain that went through. Dad had a drain that went to the basement. You know, uh, in those days, a lot of houses had a little uh, w door, cubby hole on the outside of the house. Mm -hmm. And they would back up to the to the ice box, and so the ice man would open that little cubby hole and then put it right back into the refrigerator refrigerator or ice box. Ice box. Yeah. We didn't have to have that here, but some no. people did. No, Mr. Bankton always came in and had had a chat. He was a very uh, jolly very man. Jolly yeah. man, and, and I think Mother forget, enjoyed having him stop in. Don't forget the ice slivers that we did. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah we'd go out and he'd let us take this. He'd the give little us hunks little of, ice. of ice. Yeah. <laughs> And we had the popcorn man that came around with his horse and buggy, too. Really? Yes. Now, they're yeah. my kind of man. And yeah. by the way, do you know where there is a, a popcorn man's wagon? Where? Out at Southtown in the mall. Oh, really? It is one of the original old uh, popcorn man. Yeah, that was out there the other day and saw it. Hmm. You can I'll take your children out to see it. He probably had a whistle that, uh, yeah, that kind of, uh, I don't know, steam whistle. Yeah, whistle. yeah. So I think he... <laughs> and, uh, he always seemed to come shortly before dinner, so I, so Mother never liked it, that. But uh, we would get ice cream cones or, uh, or popcorn. popcorn. Mm -hmm. And one of the times, right over in that corner over there, I had just bought some popcorn from the, or, or an ice cream cone, I don't remember which, I was quite young, from the popcorn man, and I sat down on the curb to uh, eat it, and by happenstance, the horses backed up mm -hmm. and this metal wheel went right over my foot yeah, and I had a sore foot for quite a long time. Probably yeah. cracked it. I don't know, I mean it may have, but it certainly uh, made it bleed. Mm -hmm. And uh, here this little kid that had gone out yeah. to get something for fun. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the popcorn wagons parking right over here on uh, Abbott, just around the corner of Abbott. We uh, we cut through the yes. Ostrom's backyard and go up Yes, up there. Yeah, parked there quite often. Uh -huh. And I know I looked once and toppled the ice cream off, and I, oh, oh that was dear. a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> fell on the street, huh? Yeah, banana you ice cream. That oh, yes, right. that was banana ice cream. That yeah. was good. You remember the poison ivy also that grew along that uh, side? Of which you got. And which I always got into. In yeah. those days, the treatment for poison ivy was to wrap your, you put calamine lotion on the, like it was uh, my knees to my ankles, calamine lotion on first. Then you'd wrap the whole thing with, wa uh, not wax paper, uh, oil cloth, which is absolutely the worst thing you could do because it kept held the moisture in. 
and I remember just it was it was so painful that I would run outside and I would jump rope or just run and stamp my legs down so so this, it didn't so hurt this, anymore huh? so the uh, um, oil cloth oil cloth would jiggle up and down the scratch <laughs> <laughs> That's a new way. I, I don't remember that. I remember you having oh, it. Oh, I had to yeah, resubble it. I always got into it. Of course, we went to uh, Girl Scout camp and uh, Campfire Girl camp. Mm -hmm. I don't think you did. Did no, you? No, I never went to camp. Never went to camp. Mm -hmm. I went to North Dakota instead. Yeah, I was a bluebird and a campfire girl, and Irene was a brownie and a Girl and Scout. A Girl Scout. We were uh, also going to mention walking down to the park, and when we talk about the park, it was usually Linden Hills when we were just little children, because Pershing wasn't built until 1933. 1933. Yeah. yeah. But we were just small children, uh, not even school age. I, I'm sure I wasn't. You perhaps well, were. Betty was. Because yeah. You probably were maybe first moved. grade or something like that. And yeah. uh, we would walk down to Linden Hills Park to go swimming in this little wading pool. And as Betty mentioned a minute ago, I'd take our lunch that Mother had packed and our towels and this little tribe of kids <laughs> d dwaddling along the way and we'd spend the day down there. And I do remember one day I thought I was dead. Wow. A bad boy <laughs> came in and held me underneath in the pool. <gasps> oh, dear. And they, they bring the park benches yeah. in. Do you remember them? To the yes. boys would take yes, the park the boys, benches yes. in. And this kid mm -hmm. put a park bench on top of me and held me under. And I thought, this is the end of my short life. <laughs> but somehow or other, I managed to surface. And mm. Boy, that was mean. <laughs> yeah, I know it. But, you know, obviously, he didn't know. Oh, and another thing I remember, uh, we were teeter-tottering. And I got off the teeter and let somebody else it bang. It may have been me, because I remember yeah, that. I was that totally that ostracized from the group. <laughs> for well, a long I think time. you did that to me. I know I had it done to me <laughs> yeah, anyway. I, I, I don't and went down with it. It doesn't, well, doesn't seem to me that it was you. It seemed to me oh. it was some other child. And, and you and Joyce just berated oh. me. <laughs> oh, you terrible child. <laughs> As well they should. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, never, I didn't get over that. <laughs> But then uh, later on, they built a park right over here called Pershing Park, and we were very much a part of Pershing Park and all oh, yes. the activities that went on there. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady named Pat, and you probably know her last O'Keefe. name. Keith. O'Keefe, or Keefe. No, just Keefe. O'Keefe, mm -hmm. who was uh, an instructor, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, there. The playground supervisor. And, uh, everybody became very uh, interested in yeah, we had doing things fun. with her, and one year they had a uh, Winter Carnival, particularly, I remember this, and every car was the princess and everything, and I do remember I used to play the bugle, so I was the, uh, whatever the they are, the word, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, we the all age. had such important parts, yeah. hope your lips didn't stick to the bugle. <laughs> well, uh, didn't yeah, like this so. and that. Do you remember the three-legged race, March, that you oh. and I were in? <laughs> <laughs> right down and right off the bat. <laughs> I can remember especially because I, I was so embarrassed over it because I kept saying to her I was the older sister, of yeah. course, you know, I knew it better than she. Now, whatever you do, don't make a mistake. <laughs> we'd practice, we'd practice, and we'd practice, and of course, who was the one that just started to run like normal? <laughs> was me. <laughs> and down we went. And we didn't win. <laughs> no, no. But uh, uh, and back uh, when we were talking about when we were just little, uh, it, we've talked many times about how we marvel at the things that our parents allowed us to do. And of course, it was a different world in those days, but as just small, small children, we would walk down to Lake Harriet, which was five or six blocks down, and spend the day or the morning walking around the lake, gathering mm -hmm. stones. And going on the Indian trails. Little agates, as I recall. Yeah, they, they were. That's right. And right up and down those mounds. and. The same trees that are leaning out over the they, lake were yeah. there then. They didn't look any different then as they do now. Mm -hmm. Same ones. And the Indian Trail. All yeah, there was the Indian, Indian trail. trail. There was the trail there. That we always called the Indian Trail, but it may have been. It may it may because well there been, were yeah. there it were Indians Mark had been. Yes, yes, of course it was. Of course Down it was. Down near the uh, yeah. bandstand. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's on, on the side. Of yeah. course, right there in the bandstand was out over the water, wasn't it? Oh, at no, one time. Not, no, we don't, don't remember that. We don't that was before that. we. I think they built yeah. this one in the early 30s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or not this one, the one that we all remember, mm -hmm. the last one. Mm 
we had many family picnics down at the picnic grounds. Uh, and, uh, and it was our lake. Now, now it's so yes, it loaded was, it with was people our, our all lake. over the yes, place. Yeah, that belonged to us, we thought. And yeah. remember the time you and I walked across the lake and the, oh. and the ice? We, we started from the east side. We, we were going to walk around the lake. Spooky. Somebody else was with us. I don't remember who. Maybe Donna Ensign yeah. or something. I don't know. And we got over to the east side. We said, oh, let's walk across the lake because mm -hmm. it was still winter and the ice was nice and firm. So away we went with the uh, little kids, three yeah. of us, as I recall. And we got over here to 47th and Zenith area and ha -ha, the, uh, the ice had Great. melted and the wind had blown the ice out and it was just slush. Mm -hmm. And we were out you know, as far as from here to the corner the, down there going up to our hips in slush. Okay. We Mom's made good. it. We're lucky we this made it. This is how we looked at in the about in the days that we're talking about right now. Now who's who? Uh, well, this is me. I, I think I'm about eight years old there, and uh, that's Marge, mm -hmm. cute little girl, and Irene, looking like she's got a poker up her back here, mm -hmm. <laughs> and little George with his curls, his little okay. blonde curls. Hold them. More this way. More yeah. this way? Yeah. Can you zero in on them? Well, fairly. For sure, jiggling. Perfectly. <laughs> yeah. I can't quite zoom close enough. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, that's that's how we looked when we were in the, uh, the days we're talking about right now. Tell them about the uh, going downtown, the street. Thing. Yeah, and we used to go downtown. I remember it was when. Before I was uh, in junior high, there'd be fifth grade and sixth grade along in there. Uh, we would go downtown on the streetcar with just uh, our friends and um, go to the Minnesota Theater. The Minnesota Theater was uh, one of the uh, extravagantly built theaters that they used to make that was very plush and it had. Um, we, what we remember mostly, they had two big thrones. They looked just like a king's throne up on the balcony. <coughs> and uh, we'd like to sit in those. And we would go down there and spend hours. We'd watch the movie. They also had a stage show in those days. And uh, oh, and we would just play around and play, the and play yeah. princess and queen and, <laughs> and all kinds of things. We spent the whole afternoon there and, like and nobody organ. seemed to matter. There was a, yes, there was a, a pipe organ that came up. Eddie, Eddie uh, Duchin played. Yeah. I remember yeah. once Paul Whiteman was there and, the and, organ come up and his organ, the, the organ came up out of the stage. And the, uh, the ushers were very tolerant of us. They yeah. let us they do were that. Just boys. <laughs> yeah, they were just kids. Oh, and there was a lady that uh, played the harp. You'd oh, come yeah. in this big uh, uh, lobby, and there was beautiful big stairs with red uh, bell, carpeting, uh, red yeah. um, carpeting. Blush or something. And up at the landing was stood uh, this sat this lady in a beautiful dress and long blonde hair, and she played the harp. Mm -hmm right up there. It was very uh, elegant. Mm -hmm. And I remember once talking to her uh, when we were there, and she showed us her fingers. They were just raw, red, uh -huh. just raw from playing the harp. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember that too. So, uh, this was that, in the 30s? Mm -hmm. the yes. That building was, that was probably the only way she could earn make a living. A living. Mm -hmm. Oh, and once on those very same stairs, as I was going up the stairs, there was two dollar bills on the stairs that I found. I picked up these two dollar bills and, and I went, money took them to the usher and told him I found them and he said, well, you keep them. And so then it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that How much did the movie cost at that time? Oh, I probably think we spent 50 cents. cents. Oh, well, 15, 15 or 15 maybe. Maybe. For, no, probably for 15 kids. It was 10 for kids and 15 for adults in the afternoon. At, at, uh, at the oh, Minnesota? I'm sure, I'm sure it was. Well, we used to go first to Dayton's um, lunchroom and buy a, a, a minced ham sandwich and a chocolate sundae for 15 cents. The, the sandwich was a nickel and the sundae was a dime. And those so minced ham sandwiches were good. Yeah. And they were, <laughs> they were good. really good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That building stood on, the, on LaSalle right across from the uh, uh, YMCA. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the corner, there's a parking lot there now. Mm. Yeah, where the and that was a beautiful theater. It's too bad they had to take it down. Yeah, because it, it was one of those. Why did they take it down? You know? Oh, they were on a kick at that time to get rid of get expensive rid of things. All the old things. <laughs> but every now and then on television, you'll see a, a, sh a subject uh -huh. about the old fancy theaters there's that they built in the twenties and thirties, and they're they're still there. Yeah. And they're they're really almost like museums, yeah. and it's too bad they took that one mm -hmm. down. Yeah, yeah. That, that is a particularly ugly parking lot too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but handy. Yeah. Well, it, it not the it, well, the parking lot on that out. corner is part of the LaSalle parking. It's right zone. across from that parking it's, uh, lot. Really. Not Kitty, it not, it's Kitty across corner. LaSalle nine, from the corner of Ninth and LaSalle. Yeah, on Ninth and LaSalle. Here's but 18. it's a, between Eighth and Ninth, yeah. I think. No, I'm talking about right across. It would be same side as the Y, right across. No, across this street. was across the street from the Y, just uh, east or whatever you call uh, it. Was where from the y. Where, uh, yeah, where KSTP was oh, for yeah. a while. Yeah. Yes, right. that's it. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about uh, Robert Fulton days too. In those days, we came home for lunch. We went in the morning, we came back home, and we, of course we always walked. I mean, there wasn't such a thing as getting a ride to school. That was I heard of, and there were no buses. Yeah. And then we'd have lunch, and then we'd walk back, and we'd have afternoon session, and we'd walk home again. Mm -hmm. And it was always such a wonderful feeling to me as a child, and I know Betty and Marge feel the same way, of getting home again. Mm -hmm. I really didn't care about going over to somebody's <laughs> house to play. No, I just, I just wanted to get home. Yeah. It was such a wonderful thing, and come in the door and yell, I'm home, I'm home. And Mother, Mom was always there. Yep, yeah. she always made it such a haven that we, we just wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we had a happy childhood. I remember you saying about the older times with uh, the Arnaz boys. Uh, oh they, yeah, when we were there. older, yeah. Uh, the what? Uh, Pete, Pete Ar Arnas, who is now Peter Graves, was a very good friend of our brother George's, and they went to Southwest High School, and they would come here after school and be all hanging around here with their feet Sticking out like Six this. Graves. Six. Pete Graves was one of them. He was tall. Yeah. And and, oh, and Pete, Pete Arnold. He used really. to always <laughs> fix his. Oh waves. yes, he was. He always was a ladies' man, right from where he go. I mean, he was smooth. <laughs> but uh, I also knew his older brother, uh, Jim Arnold. They went you to date a, him once. No, I never dated him, but I went triple dated with him oh. <laughs> one time. And, and we had a blind date for him, and she was the littlest, tiniest person on her. <laughs> and uh, we went out to Excelsior, and we went through, went into the, uh, uh, what, what was the thing that had all the, uh, all the different things in the it? Fun the, house. the fun house. Yeah, the fun house. And uh, this little, this little gal, her name was uh, Anne, got into the the thing that goes around like this, and you're supposed to the walk all the way through it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And she fell down in there. And so this big P, uh, Jim Arnas, who is 6'6 six, six or something, or 6'9 or whatever he is, went in to <laughs> rescue her, and he fell. And they were <laughs> they were just going around and around, around, around and around, and he was yeah. trying to keep away from her so he wouldn't step on her. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally the man <laughs> discovered there was something wrong. <laughs> and they all stopped out yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was, we were, of course, all laughing and giggling and yeah. thinking this was great desperate. sport. <laughs> yeah. I remember well, the fun house, yeah. That. That, that was, was a, a big amusement, amusement park out there. Amusement park out oh, there. Oh, it was. Right there. on the lake. We always went there at least once a year as, oh, at as least. a family. Oh, at least, yes. Um, well, I think yeah. the, uh, isn't the um, roller coaster out at the Valley Fair now? Yes. The, the original roller coaster. Oh, the yes. original roller coaster from Excelsior is at Valley Fair. I hope they and I have still I hope they rebuilt it. <laughs> well, you know, they refix some stuff the, like uh, that. Carousel is uh right back to one. I don't know what became of the carousel. Uh that may have been the one that Saint Paul no, I never heard Does that it was. Saint there. Paul have the one that was at the State Fair? Yes. And that of course was a wonderful one. Yeah. yeah. Very much like the one that I thought that was Excelsior, but maybe it was State Fair or something. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, a, you know, there is a pretty good carousel at Valley Fair now too. I maybe mean, that might moved, it yeah. might might be. Mm -hmm. I hadn't really thought mm -hmm. about it because mm -hmm. I have ridden that one at Valley Fair too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
uh, let's see, did we cover West High School? Oh, and West was the best. <laughs> <laughs> and we covered Fulton. Uh, oh, well, pretty much. I see. Uh, the only thing I, well, it was one thing I mentioned, uh, we used to have fire drills, and Mrs. Neville, yeah. the, the uh, principal, used to play this, I can hum March. this song, but I don't know what it was. It was so when she played the piano when we come back in, that was all safe. We yeah. heard her playing that song, yeah. and we could, the it school made, was just kind of, it just kind of almost all marched right, in. It was a march, yeah. And, yeah. yeah. We would go outside with this horrible noise, and then we would hear her playing. We could hear her playing in the hall. And that sort of made everything all right. We got went back and went to our rooms. Mm -hmm. and all was well. Do you remember the dental parades we had? Oh yes. yes. And I had some problems with that because my teeth were not too good, and you had to have a, had a, to have gold, a gold star. star. And I almost always got a pink slip early on and I would have to get my teeth fixed and then I'd maybe get a gold star. Yeah, the we'd, dental nurse came around, and huh? examined everybody's teeth in the in the class and she'd either give you a gold star or a pink slip saying you had to go to the dentist. There was something And wrong. I got pink slips. Then you'd, the time. you'd make a crown, <laughs> just a band of paper that was your, the size of your head and you'd put a big gold star on it. Yeah, and that always took place in June, often times uh -huh. on my birthday. Yes. That we oh, and we have, used to Always Everybody have that had a gold star could be in this parade, mm -hmm. and we paraded around the neighborhood and around the building uh, and uh, up and down a couple of streets, and everybody had a gold star. And speaking then, of um, uh, that that era, something that always kind of intrigued my boys. I used to tell them the story about one of the teachers. Her name was Miss Muth, and I think it was third grade. And if you were bad, you had to wear a baby tender. And a baby tender was a piece of paper this this width, this paper, and it would be made in a circle. And then you'd have to put it over your head. It would rest on your shoulders, and it would come to a about here. And then you'd go and sit in the front of the class yes. <laughs> with this paper around your face. Yes. Yeah, I never shame, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, she didn't do that. I had Miss Muth, but she, I don't think she, she didn't did that. Do that. Fast. Yeah. Well, I had, did you ever have to do it? I did. I had to wear the baby gender once. <laughs> <laughs> but Robert Fulton was a good school uh, in that, gee, we had a chance to go, I at least went from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And when you were in eighth grade, you were really big shots and they would have a... Um, a march or something around the school. You'd go on all the. You mean when you graduate? Yeah, when you the graduate. Day you graduated. And the whole graduating class would march through the hallways, and then uh, with their ribbons. They, yeah. With, oh yes, and King Lane still has his. I, have, I still have mine. Oh, you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, we had purple and gold. Purple and yeah, gold. Yeah, purple and gold ribbons. But any. Signs. But anyway, what what they would do? The the uh, people would go around, and then the like that was the. Uh, 8A class, okay, the 8B class would be a half a year behind them. One of the boys of the 8B class would say, what's the matter with the 8th grade? Yeah, what's the matter with the 8As, eight, eight eight I guess. Eight, I guess. They're and all then right. somebody would say, they're all right. And then he'd say, who's all right? The 8As. <laughs> but that was very that impressive to all of us year. younger and children. We could hear them <laughs> downstairs, and pretty soon we were upstairs yes. doing it too. And, and yeah. the girls made their that. own graduation yes. dresses in the sewing class. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how we agonized over those. Oh, dear. Yes, in fact, uh, I. Uh, Many a mother I would be <laughs> fixing yes, uh, things the night before graduation. Mothers, well, we uh, made them in class and then we wore them on graduation day. And uh, a lot of mothers spent the <clears throat> night before graduation day finishing dresses. Finishing them. <laughs> Redoing them. Right? Undoing them and doing them over. But I, mine didn't. I, I did pretty no, well. No, well, you I, always I did know how to sew. Yeah. But see, Marge and I both graduated in the yeah. winter time, and mm -hmm. that was that was different. Though. Those dresses were more difficult, really. Well, years, they were still cotton dresses. They were cotton. That's true, but it's kind of a different style somehow. I had a lot of pleats in mine, and it was, oh it was a very <laughs> difficult dress to, to uh, make. Mm. It was Chinese. Well, what rate. about you, cars? You guys did. When did, did you have a car when you moved out here in '25? Or well, they must have. Uh, Dad, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had, he a had an old Dodge. 
No, a Dodge. It was a Dodge. It was blue. With the light in the middle of the front yeah. windshield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, then it, uh, I think we had that. No, we had a Studebaker then. Yeah, Studebaker. Yeah. Remember and the then we got a brand Baker. new Ford. The other twos had been used cars. What year was the Ford? The, the Ford was in 1936. That was a big mm -hmm. year for us, 36. Hopkins. Because uh, Dad uh, changed jobs. He, got, uh, he quit working for uh, General, Electric. General Electric and started working for Hart Carter Company, apparently at more money. Um, and he got a company car. And so he felt that he could afford to buy a new family car at the same time. And so we had a, a deluxe model a sedan for the family car. And he had a standard model for this uh, company car. So we had two new cars, which was just overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And um, by that time, I was old enough to drive, because I learned to drive in the old Studebaker. And so they were very generous about letting us use the car. Mm -hmm. And um, all our friends, most of them didn't have cars, so we did a lot of... So you were hot tied. Yeah. Yes, and uh, mm -hmm. we, would, we would get the car to go on picnics and that sort of thing with well, our friends. A lot of people on the block didn't own, they didn't own a car at all. No. Because a lot of the houses didn't even have garages. No, when they built these houses, they weren't considering uh, cars and garages. Mm -hmm. I remember the cars before that, though, before the Ford, the 36 Ford, uh, with the running boards. Mm -hmm. And we'd yes. stand on the running boards and hook our arms around, around. Like, like gangsters. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and ride around the block, uh -huh. all three or four of us hanging on the running boards. That was a lot of fun. And uh, then there was rumble seats, too, that uh, yeah. you were sitting outside in this Rumble wind in the rain and the, and the, <laughs> with the wind blowing all over. And, uh, yeah. So what else do you guys do it for fun as kids? As kids, just just had fun. <laughs> we uh, we did a I, lot of hiking. I remember, yes. particularly Irene and and I remember either tagging along or going with my group. But we'd go all the walk, you know, all the way over to Minnehaha Falls, and we would walk out to Bush Lake and. We'd walk over to uh, Glenwood Park, which is now Theodore Worth Park. All those We'd walk downtown. Them. I remember walking downtown. I don't remember that, but I do remember all. I thought that was a long way it's for long, kids under yeah. 10 years it's old. Long way to ride your bike, let alone. No, we, we just <laughs> rode. We, we'd take our lunch with us, you know, and we had it eaten before we even got to our destination. But yeah. Nevertheless, and I do remember Irene. I, I got up there too, but I wasn't as. I didn't go as far as Irene, but. It, it, uh, getting up on a the underneath a bridge over at was it Nicollet Avenue? No, or? no, the was, bridge was at uh, or where at, was it? At, at um, right. Minnehaha Falls. Oh. Yeah. Uh, when, when you go to the falls and you get go down in the oh yeah, uh, I remember down the stairs. Yeah. You walk down toward the river, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this bridge spanned from the like the old soldiers' home. Now yeah. it's the Veterans Administration. Yeah. Yeah. I remember over to part. the other side, and we climbed the girders underneath that bridge. Well, now that You're bridge way up was way up there and it was a long bridge because it spanned this big chasm mm -hmm. and uh, you know you had to go along run between supports and then you'd have to inch around it uh, why we ever did I cannot imagine and I know Don Hudson was scared to death and of course we were all kind of kidding him making fun of him the poor guy made it he made it across we all did but uh, <laughs> think about those things I think about climbing the water tower. Yeah, I remember climbing, climbing that water oh. tower. And then when you got up towards the top, it kind of goes back this way. Well, at least you thought it did. Whether it did or didn't, <laughs> I don't know, but you thought it Just did. Just crazy. And I remember being up there one beautiful summer day and listening to the birds twittering, and I was thinking, and I'm up here and I'll never get down. <laughs> this is the end of my life. It was such a beautiful day. <laughs> Why did I do this? <laughs> Well, they animals. were much more adventurous than I was. <laughs> I was home playing jacks and paper Reading dolls rooms. and uh, yeah. cards. My oh, friend I... Joyce Turton and I played a lot of cards, and uh, we were much more sedentary. Well, let's see some of Marge's pictures when she was little. Yeah. Well, this isn't so much when I was little. No. It was, it's through the stages of my life, shall we well, say. Well, let's see it. 
Okay, now. Wait a minute. Now. Can you see? Wait. You gotta hold it up. They're not screwed in, are they? No, they're not. <laughs> you can take them out. Yeah. This is a picture when I was just a baby. You have to hold it up baby. more straight, yeah. Right there. Uh-huh. That's a real cute baby picture. Yeah. She... I was cute when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, this is, I was a little bit older here, and the person that was with me is Betty, but she's covered up there. Because <laughs> this is a... Well, that's the same picture this is as a, this. Yeah, that we a show. collage of my life, shall we say. And um, let's see now. This was when I probably was in about probably ninth grade, maybe, maybe, maybe eighth grade. And um, this is when I was going to radio school in Kansas City, Missouri, and I eventually became a airline, I mean, a, a radio operator for the airlines, for American Airlines. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that is where I met my now husband. He was also a radio operator. And then after we got married, I transferred to reservations, which I really liked better. And, uh, oh, this was taken from high school right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was taken when I was uh, traveling around, having fun. Uh, no, I, it was on a trip, on a, a little cruise, just mm -hmm. a little cruise, mm -hmm. <laughs> a weekend cruise. I don't remember if it was. No, and this was when somebody in my family got married. I don't know. It was just I just ha I have a corsage on, so I don't re don't remember who it was. Maybe it was you. No, no, no. It was later on. But anyway. That's Marge. That's me. Marge. Mm -hmm. Any other photos you want to show? Well, here's a big fat baby. That's me. That's Grandma Betty. Is uh. Six Bob months Dino. old. December 17th, 1919. Mm. They must have taken that on my birthday, uh -huh. or on Irene's birthday. No, Irene's but birthday. she wasn't born yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I you was were on the six big months cheese. old. And yeah. this, is, this is how I looked as the demure young. When's that? Is that your high school picture? Oh, probably sixth Graduation. or seventh grade. Oh. oh, okay. I think. Maybe older than that. Junior mm -hmm. high, anyway. Maybe your eighth grade. Yeah. Maybe it was from uh, Jefferson or something. It Although might you been. look younger. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old I was then. And now uh, uh, here's another big picture of me as about two, two years old with my dolly. Mm -hmm. And that little, little plump then still too. Let me see that one. Yeah. You can go ahead and talk. Oh, yeah. I was just looking at some notes here that Betty had made uh, suggestions. And one thing that we haven't talked about at all is the beautiful garden that oh, Mother and Dad yeah, yeah. made. We, at that time, uh, we owned extra lots out to the south of the house. And um, my, our dad worked very hard uh, all summer and af afternoons when he'd come home from work and that sort of thing. Fixing that garden, I can just see him out there with a pitchfork, turning the soil and just like a, a farmer would. Mm -hmm. He had vegetable garden, he had corn, he had tomatoes, he had uh, potatoes. Uh, we had, I can remember going along with a tin can full of kerosene or something and with a little stick and knocking potato bugs off into this. And the one thing that I know Betty and I have talked about this many times that and we've regretted during the year, uh, later times was that he used to ask us to come out and help him. And we <laughs> would think of more reasons why we wouldn't have to go out in that garden and help. Yeah, we do it so reluctantly, and I thought, why didn't we get out get, there and help? Get it, out yeah. there and help more often. Right. And um, mother you were had kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, typical kids. Mother had uh, a flower garden, which of course Dad would do the major uh, preparation yeah, work. Anything. And she had it one one year. She had a rose arbor that was just beautiful. And uh, oh, it gor was the gorgeous uh, flowers. Show place. The neighbor, show place of the neighborhood. People would Every drive day. by and stop their cars and look and sometimes get out and wander, you know, down and talk to us yeah. and that sort of thing. And Around. some of those flowers are still blooming. They're in the Hanson's backyard. And the peonies, Betty can the still peonies. look at the peonies. Still, I still bloom have on the, your birthday. Uh, they bloom on my birthday. And actually, they are descendants of a peony bush from the old farm out in, uh, in North Dakota. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> 
and remember the uh, currents that were uh, current bushes across the back of the property and mother used to make current jelly that was so good. So what were grandpa and grandma like? Remarkable people, I would say. They were, they were great. They were low-key type people and they wanted us to enjoy life as much as possible and they never really put any real restrictions on us. Or I any pressure. Either. Yeah, I remember when we used to go out on dates at night. They never insisted, now you be home at 11 o'clock or you something know, like that. Was never discussed. They uh, just let us do our thing. I do remember one time um, I was over in St. Paul with a bunch of kids. I don't know what we had been to or something, but the car froze up over there. It was the winter time. And that was the one time I did call Mother and said we were not going to be home until a lot later, and I don't think we got home till three o'clock. But she understood this. Yeah. Uh, well, she trusted us, uh, and uh, I think we we didn't want to uh, uh, spoil that trust. You know, mm -hmm. we knew what she would like, and uh, we did it the, the way because we just never considered it was not doing it. Yeah, and we didn't want to make her unhappy. Mm -hmm. And by doing the wrong thing, uh -huh. and uh, she uh, she never set a time no. limit. No. And um, as far as they their relationship with each other, um, I think uh, they had a good marriage. They they had their problems as long with like anyone. Uh, mother was uh, more emotional, more volatile, and dad was kind of the plotter. And uh, mostly he gave in to her. I mean, she whatever she wanted was fine with him. But once in a while he, he'd set his foot down and then everybody listened when he did that. But uh, I think uh, they got along well. Oh, I think they did too. The only thing that I recall them ever having words about was the garden. Yes, they used to argue about that because... Uh, Dad would cut things back. He always <laughs> wanted things... Uh, Symmetrical. Ge symmetrical, geometrical, and she wanted to use the freeform kind of uh, idea, <laughs> and uh, he could, he just couldn't see that. He wanted to lined up straight. And he'd go out with the lopping shears and just chop, chop, chop. <laughs> she'd sit in the, in the window in the bedroom and tears coming down her face, and she'd be so mad, and he'd, he'd be out there chopping all these. Wishes down. Of course, I think he was probably right. He, you know, yeah, actually, probably yeah. was. <laughs> right. But he was always wrapped up in his uh, business. That when we'd sit at the table at night, um, he'd be sitting there, obviously still thinking about what he'd been doing all day, mm -hmm. and the rest of us would be chatting away for all we were worth. Uh, Mostly like woman girl talk. talk. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he finished, he'd get up and he'd say, Well, I gotta get my pipe. And he'd, he'd get up and light his pipe and come off and sit. Uh -huh. and, and the rest of us would stay around the table and talk some more. But I, I do remember having uh, very happy meal times, dinner. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mother was not, I don't mean strict, but she always instructed us in the proper way to sit at the table and to eat and to to converse and that sort of thing, and she did things nicely. Yeah, we set the table nicely. We always had uh, linen napkins uh -huh. and a tablecloth and a butter. And she would knife say, "No, no." If we were, you know, <laughs> yeah, or whatever did, we were doing know. wrong, we, uh -huh. was, we were expected to learn how to do things. And properly. she must have learned that from her mother and her mm -hmm. mother from her mother. So yeah. we were saying mm -hmm. that uh, they were a little. And then there were many years that Lois, our cousin,